All right, this video is going to talk about how we can do inference, meaning significance test and confidence intervals, when we do linear regression. And we're going to take some real data. It's actually interesting to me and perhaps to some of you other students about our varsity baseball team. Uh, this year, we're really focusing on reducing the number of times that we strike out offensively. Um, and we're hoping that that helps us win more games because we think it'll help us score more runs. Uh, so that's something we're focusing on. So I decided to pull some data from this season. We played 11 games. We're 8-3. and three, And those data are, for each game, the number of runs we've scored versus also the number of times we struck out as a team. So you were asked to look at this. So I'll go over it quickly. Um, so the first thing you see is that there is a negative association. As the number of strikeouts increase, the runs decrease. So when I say describe the relationship, that's what we're talking about. The strength and the direction of the relationship. And also it looks pretty linear as well. Okay, writing the regression equation. This information right here was spit, it, spit out by Minitab. And if you remember, there are two pieces that we need to find a regression equation. We need the constant, or the y-intercept, and we need the slope, okay? All this other stuff, for now, in fact, until today, we don't care about. But after we complete this video, we will care about it, and we'll know what it means. So, but these are the numbers we're going to use right now. The y-intercept is the constant, and the slope is the other number. So here's our regression equation. The number of runs is 18.337 minus 2.58 times the number of strikeouts. And what that means is for every, we decrease our strikeouts by one per game, we predict that we will score 2.58 more runs. It is a prediction, and that's an interpretation of that particular slope. Okay, I could also say for every increase of one strikeout per game, we predict we'd score 2.58 fewer runs. It's another way of saying this. R squared is right here. That is the percentage of variability explained by the response variable. So 71.48% of the variability in runs is explained by the model. And residuals, remember, are actuals. Minus predicted, so the actual value for the Hersey game of the response variable is we actually scored two runs. We won this game two to zero. Okay. Um, the predicted, if I plug in the number of times we struck out that game, which was six, we predict we scored 2.58 runs. And so the difference between those two actual minus predicted is negative 0.857. That's the residual. And then finally, the residual plot right here. What we look for in a residual plot, if you remember, is structure. If there's structure, that means there's pattern to our errors. And if there's pattern to our errors, we can integrate that into our model and make it actually more accurate or better. But this lack of structure, I don't really see any structure here, tells us that our linear model is appropriate. So that tells us that the relationship that we're looking at between runs and strikeouts is linear. Okay? All right, so that's nothing new, all that stuff. Pretty much review. If we move on to the back, okay, and we kind of read this. The slope, the y-intercept, the correlation, and the r-squared. All these things that we get from this output, those are just statistics, okay? If I were to run a regression on perhaps 11 different games, I would get a different value for the slope, the y-intercept, the correlation, and the r-squared. Okay? We found a negative slope. This says positive, negative. We found a negative slope, but maybe that's just due to chance. Maybe if I took more data or I took more samples, that the slope I got was just luck, that maybe there is no relationship, that there were no relationship between the strikeouts and the run score, then... I would expect the slope between the variables to be zero, okay? So the point is that these things are statistics, and we can do inference on them, meaning we can do significance tests or confidence intervals. So there is some unknown regression line, okay? Just like we have mu that stands for means and p, these are parameters, we have a regression model. 
that is the average y, notice that's a mu, is equal to alpha plus beta x. Okay, now this alpha, not to be confused with the significance level, this is the true y-intercept. And this beta is the true slope. So when we estimate the slope from our sample, it's just an estimate. We actually call it b. So in this case, b was negative 2.58. Okay? But that was just an estimate for this true slope. If I were to take every game ever played and every game that could ever be played, and I will look at the relationship between these two variables, there is some unknown beta. Of course, this is not something that we can do. Okay? All right. For any fixed x, so suppose I take a fixed number of strikeouts per game. So say three. Okay? When we do regression inference, we are assuming that really the data, the number of runs, is going to be spread out around this true regression line. In fact, it's going to be spread out according to a normal model. Okay, so it kind of looks like that. And for any x, we would say that there's like a, the, the data are going to be normally distributed around that line. Okay, the true regression line. Okay, so we have this quantity that's called S. It's really the standard error about the regression line. And here's the equation for S, and it's not something you really ever compute manually, but it's the square root of the sum of each value minus the predicted value squared all over n minus 2. Okay, now this right here should look familiar. That is the residuals. Okay, so this is really the standard deviation of the residuals. Okay, now the one little thing that might be slightly confusing is why is it n minus 2? Well, this is the degrees of freedom for this statistic. And the reason it's not n minus 1, or just n, is that really there's two unknown parameters when we're doing inference for regression. There's alpha and beta. So that's why it's n minus 2. But anyway, s is called the standard deviation about the regression line, or the standard error about the regression line. And it's given by this formula. And we don't usually or ever compute it by hand. If we go back up to our output, okay, so look back on the front side, right here. That's s. Okay? That's the standard deviation of the residuals. All right? So 3.83 is what we have for this. Now, we talked about that if we were to run more regressions, there would be different slopes every time we do it. So the slope is, the, is a random variable, and there's a sampling distribution for it. And so there's a standard error of the slope. Okay, now remember for means, like the standard error of x bar is just s over the square root of n. Okay, well the standard error for slope is s over, okay, and s is in units of, uh, of whatever our response variable is, over this. Okay, so notice that this is in the units of y, and if you think about it, this is in the units of x. So this is just going to be unitless. It's a standard deviation of the slope. Okay, it's not actually, sorry, it's not unitless. It's in the units of the slope. Okay, now again, this is not something we compute. This is something we get from the computer output. Well, let's look at this. Oh, it says standard error of coefficient. Well, that would be right here. The standard error of the slope is 0 0.5439. 0 0.5439. Okay, so we're going to need those quantities, and I just wanted to highlight them. But really, we can do inference on the slope. Okay, so I'm gonna actually going to stop this video, and I'm going to start a new one, in which we will do a significance test on the slope. So please go to the next video.